So I only have a, I only have three slides. So hopefully, get through the get through the three, and then uh, some people can tune in with opinions. Because I, I guess I have a I have a a problem, and I don't particularly care for any particular solution. So yeah, pretty much this came up because I I sent some some patches trying to make changes in uh, kcompy.socks and the the def config and I pretty much shut them down as oh no you can't I can't make those changes they're not really what's what's the the policy I suppose for um, for kconfig and so on asking oh yeah what so what is the policy it became kind of it was uh, pretty am ambiguous so I went went to this going oh yeah let's okay let's maybe come up with a policy that that does make sense for what we have and kind of sort them out. So just for a little bit of background, what we have at the moment is we've got five entries in kconfig.socks. We got four real socks and the, the vert machine. Um, the symbols are all named sock underscore something. So you got the sci five and star five ones, which are not really socks. They're more groups of socks, I suppose. Um, and then my chip stuff. Uh, yeah, it is actually just, it's a name after just one sock. So it was Palmer's original original goal for this stuff was oh yeah I want like a a straightforward like an easy place where people can just turn on one symbol and they'll they'll get all the drivers whatever enabled for a given SOC, but at the moment nobody's symbol does this uh, and people who are coming over from ARM or whatever that's not what they're expecting to do from where they work from the ARM side. If we were to do this as well, there'd be a whole bunch of every time someone's turning on as a new driver they want to be coming on. Like adding a new select or whatever, so things would bloat pretty fast and overload already overloaded maintainer. So, and then one last thing that was pointed out, I think by Andrea Shab was was that uh, if you do select things, they get it'll override someone who's already set something to be a module, which I think was a problem for him with the with the uh, QMU uh, RTC driver. Yeah, there's also an issue with the select. There's also issues with where it will not select the dependencies, which we run into all the time, which is super broken. Yeah, this was, I think I suppose as well, that sometimes you, you, people go around reorganizing, changing symbols around in different driver subsystems, they wouldn't be aware that, oh yeah, I also have to go and like fix up the selects and, and things end up getting broken. Is this a problem on other architectures? Well, other architectures do it a bit differently, I suppose, so. Kind uh, of not the same problem for them. Um, so one of the ways you can do it is with menu select, which is not like select. All it does is it gives you a I want to select one, two, three, four of these config menus, and then it will give you another menu and saying that means do you want these set of drivers, and it will just show you the defaults for them. So it doesn't really help you overcome the selection problem, but it helps you overcome the grouping problem. Yeah. Uh, I guess. Other like driver tree symbols inside an Arch Risk Five menu select that okay that might be. Sorry, you'd have an initial memory menu first that would say what SOC do you want, and that would select one symbol, and then you'd have menu selects that say if the symbol is defined, then show this menu. Otherwise, if this symbol is defined, show this menu, and so, so on. I was going to get a bit later, but the Renaissance guys who are coming over to Risk Five, they do that in their sock. Uh, driver slash sock, whatever, take on the there. They have the, that kind of, oh yeah, like our actual ASAS would do one thing and then you can go select different socks, turn on all the stuff for that one sock there. So they're kind of doing, doing that sort of thing already. Okay, well, it sort of works. Sort of. And it, does, it doesn't get you into the select problem when it won't override a, a, a module. Selection. Yeah, you need the mic. <laughs> it, it doesn't get you into the select dependencies issue that, uh, Palmer outlined, and it won't override a module selection unless it will still show it in the menu and you can override it manually, but it will show you what the default is. Yeah, because yeah, I think my main goal was just like when users show up and they just say, hey, I want to run on this SOC, they don't know which drivers to select and they're just scattered all over the tree and they're not all necessarily related to the SOC or the you know, risk five or anything because uh, you know, these SOCs are coming from elsewhere and picking up drivers and IPs and whatnot. Right. Oh, great, yeah. So the, in, in general, using select in kconfig is just asking for trouble. Um, use it as little as you 
can. The way we deal with this on ARM is like we have a couple of older SOCs that still use select because they always have. Um, what works better is that you flip this all around. Like you turn in the dev config file, you turn on all the drivers for all the platforms. Um, and then you make all the drivers depend on the, the specific SOC platform. So if you're building a kernel for a particular SOC, you start with the dev config and then you turn off all the other ones and that turns off all the other drivers. That tends to work a lot better if, once you get to more than five SOCs. Yeah, and one of the problems with our current approach is that a lot of driver developers assume that that's what we're trying to do and encode the dependency logic. So you get in this weird spot where you know, so sometimes the setting in the SOC thing will turn on drivers and sometimes you have to set it on to turn on drivers and it just doesn't make any sense. So it's a mess. Mm -hmm. the, the only subsystems that actually require you to select drivers I think are clock source and IRQ chip. So because the platform maintainers decided a long time ago that they, they do not want to offer all the drivers. They only want to have the drivers selected by the platform. So they are, they are the special cases. Also, um, an interesting question would be uh, Sokfu or Archfu, because, for example, the owner D1 has ex existing precedence. There is a uh, Sanxi driver, uh, drivers all over the kernel depending on Arch Sanxi, where on this path we are currently Sokfu. Yeah, I mean, I think we should do the same thing. There's no reason to go change a bunch of code. If we can change one line of code, <laughs> why go mess with everything? My preference as well, like yeah. for, for that, I was going to say like it would be make the most sense just to go, you know, like why 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 are we different with SOC and just take the arts thing and just yeah, do it I think it's what it, I like. I think when we had the kconfig socks at the beginning, it's because I didn't really know what I was doing. It's the best I could come up with, so it obviously doesn't work. We've known that for two or three years. <laughs> no, no one's no one's had the time to sit down and actually say, yeah, let's fix it partially because we really haven't had that many socks. So it hasn't really been a concrete problem, but there are more coming now and it's going to just make a headaches for everybody for no reason if we don't fix it. So just, just, just do what arm does. <laughs> like why mess with stuff? <laughs> yeah. So that, that, that was the next thing I was going to say. Hey, um, so I, I just wanted to add to the first question. Um, is it possible to use the imply kconfig keyword somehow to, um, imply you want some drivers on the architecture level? Yeah, I think people have suggested that before and I've not found anything that like that that helps with <laughs> that, that I, So Ubud is using it extensively and I believe it is actually using it for this purpose in kconfig. Okay, interesting. That might be a good example. Okay, yeah, so I, yeah. Im imply is pretty much the worst. Uh, it's my, it, it combines the, the downsides of select and depends on. Uh, it's possible that U-Boot still has the old imply, so we've changed the meaning of that keyword a couple of times. Um, what it currently means is something gets turned on if you're running make dev config, and otherwise it has no effect. So it only turns it on if, if the symbol is not already set, but you can still turn it off, uh, which has almost no meaning at all. Uh, please just don't use it ever. We should we should kill it from the kernel. Yeah. <laughs> uh, to get back to the SOC foo or versus arch foo, so I think uh, the original reason for that is that on uh, ARM64 uh, there was a restriction on a single symbol per architect per vendor in the main kconfig file. Yeah, and we really, really didn't want that, and that's why it has a different name, because giving it a different name made it look different. But I, I think that has stopped happening elsewhere, um, so we don't have to worry about that anymore. Well, for the Renesas uh, devices, so now we have the issue that our Renesas is being used for ARM32 and for ARM64, and since the SOCs are basically... Uh, ARM SOCs with the ARM core replaced by RISC V. Uh, it's easier to keep the Arch on RISC V too. Yeah, I, I agree. It's what, I, but what I didn't want was you know have 
you know, arch vendor A and arch vendor B be impossible to turn on at the same time. And, and those things used to happen in ARM land. My saying is a lot of that's gotten fixed. But that was 10 years ago. Yeah, but remember, that's kind of when we started this stuff. Okay, <laughs> good point. Fair enough. It, ju it just hasn't gotten fixed. It's been, it's been broken for a very long time. So. Yeah, I, I think we don't need to worry about that anymore. So, so like, no, no reason to change the name just because of that. Go back a bit then. The um, is the kind of like, it sounds like you're saying, uh, Palmer and, and the sort of others that be doing the kind of default default mat, like using in the subsystem where the in the KCombic sim symbol in the subsystem to do default sock slash arch underscore or whatever and take all that stuff out of KCombic.socks and just turn on the subsystems themselves. So it sounds like what's being put forward. Yeah, I, like I think kconfig socks can go away entirely. I, we need those arch symbols from somewhere. Uh, if I remember correctly, they're in the arm, uh, you well, know, arch arm kconfig. We would have to redefine them. Before. Yeah, so we'd add we'd add those into our you know kconfig or arch list or you know I just do the same thing that arm's doing, um, and then drop kconfig dot socks, and then deal with the fallout of. You know, some drivers aren't on anymore or whatever, and sort out the def configs. What ARM has is ARM is like kconfig.platforms. It's the same okay, thing yeah, as right. Right. Yeah. Socks. yeah. So it would just be, we could just keep the file. Just yeah, just rename it everything. It's the same thing. Yeah. So then what about things like the plick, where do we should just turn on the plick anyway? Like everybody, at this point, there's non sci fi based yeah. things using the same driver. Just so I, it, that's kind of a different problem. The, the plick was not a risk five spec. <laughs> <laughs> so we thought it would not be the, like the base of all of the other inner controllers as well, but that is not the case. So <laughs> again, right? Yeah, I think probably just a historic thing. So um, it is also being ratified this year. Yeah, Mark. Mark said it's being ratified this year. So what, what about the special? Uh, Damien. What what about the special casing for for SOC? I'm I'm talking about my toy yeah. stuff that requires the tiniest possible kernel, so you really don't want to have random stuff being enabled and then go through it and then remove what you you really don't need. I think for the I I think I had one of the earlier slides I might have skimmed past it, but like it, it, it's the command board is like a, it's a special they they're, they're a special case. I mean, they 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 already have their own like straight up dev config. They already have their own like handling with the built-in DTB stuff as it is. Yes. So I would be in favor of keeping as much of that as it is as possible. Yeah, the kind won't work if you turn on every drive. <laughs> you won't yeah. be able to load it, so yeah. <laughs> it, it, it could work. You just don't enough memory to load it. Yeah. <laughs> it could still be renamed to match the others, but it would be. The I, I I don't care about the naming. Yeah. Uh, what I, I don't want to nip with is, again, uh, uh, you do a make uh, canon, whatever the, the name of the config, I forgot, and I have to do a make menu config and go through and remove what you actually don't need. Because yeah, no. that's actually harmful because it makes the, the I, kernel I, too big. I have no interest in going near that well. <laughs> so that, that's what I don't want to happen. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I don't care about whatever changes as long as it just keeps working as it is. <laughs> Like we'll probably have some def config fallout, right? Like we will try to not screw it up, and I'm sure some things will go wrong. Probably drivers will be off, not on. Um, but you know, it's just going to be a matter of dealing with it. If that makes sense. Is it the case where we just redefine have the two symbols on for? A, I think you mentioned it before. Uh, like in IRC or whatever, turn the two symbols on for one release, and then drop the other one so there's no release in which something like the canal, which is very specific, it gets broken. I think then all we're going to do is. Find nothing for a release, and then find everything we would have found. In, you, know, you know what I mean? But what, whatever. <laughs> I don't really care I don't that mind. much. <laughs> right. like I, I do. I do have one, so I will. Anything I do, I will test it on the board. So at least it'll it'll boot. Well, I miss something is a different thing, but it, I won't break its boot. That's for sure. 
It shouldn't be too hard to check the before and after of a generated config, I suppose. For that special case, the intent was to uh, use select for things that are mandatory to, to get a, a booting mode. Otherwise, otherwise, if you're like the peak or clocks, if that's or the CCTL driver, which is the weird, weirdo thing, if that's missing, you won't get anything working. And anything else like spy, I2C, or you name it, it's, it's just a default select that the user can actually uh, deselect if it doesn't want it or doesn't use it. Uh, so the drivers for all the devices on the board are, are uh, uh, selected by default, but uh, they can be deselected if you don't need them. Only the, the hardcore stuff to get something working uh, cannot be um, unselected if you selected that that SOC. That was the idea, yeah. which makes it simple for the user. Yeah, I, I think it's like way too far down the rabbit hole to tell without just looking at all the selects and not screwing it up, if that makes sense. I can't keep all the K config dependencies in my head. Yeah, no, but that, that, one, that one was an easy one. I mean, it's not a lot of things on that board, so. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I guess the, the last thing on the slide then is the def config. Is it still a bit, there's a bit of a mix of there's some stuff that's being turned on by default in, in the def config. I noticed that like, we have the Radeon and NVIDIA drivers on. And then say, for example, that when people actually use this, Pardon? People use those. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. Like, like, <laughs> I do. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So the, the the other side of it is then say you have someone who has, I don't know, DRM Sun XI for that only works on one specific SOC. Is that like is that sort of thing should that be done via default or should that be allowed in the dev config? And this is kind of how we got I don't know, Hugh, if you want to say something. I think the uh, at least in my experience on ARM, the uh, the goal is to have the dev config enable the kernel to boot on as much boards as possible with most stuff as far as it goes as module and only the uh, most important things that you need to get rid of as built in. And then people can slim down the dev config for their special, special, special case uh, on their own. Yeah. And that's how we kind of got in the situation was just trying to track which, uh, you know, why each of those dev config entries was in there by attaching them to an SOC config. Uh, if, that, if that kind of makes sense. But that's what, basically what we do now. And yeah, we'll just keep getting bigger. We probably do need to take some stuff and make a modules though, because almost nothing is a module in there. And stuff like an NVIDIA driver but should the be a NVIDIA module. Driver, <laughs> the, the, the GPU drivers are, are, they are, okay. are modules. OK, okay yeah, because they were so big for a while that back when we didn't have module support. right? Um, but my bet is that there's that whole list should probably be scrubbed right, to just see yeah, what so it really doesn't make sense to have built I in think anymore. I think as part of this, there's, there's probably some stuff in there that really maybe could be a module or could be a module that is yeah. and whatever it is. I, hope I think it's one of those things where like nobody's really had time to just run through this because without having a ton of SOCs floating around, the cruft doesn't really matter. Yeah. It's like for a while we just had sci fi ones and the canon ones and they weren't gonna run the same kernels anyway, so who cares? <laughs> right. um, but it's gonna be a mess when we have a bunch. So yeah, same very small. Okay, Atish. So when you say core things like flake, it also <clears throat> include uh, the future specs like AIA or all those uh, RVA standards, RVA specs that are drivers. I, sorry, I couldn't really hear you. Can, you. can you say that again, please? Yeah. Oh, he just asked like, what about, you know, the next generation of, you know, RISC-V interrupt controllers? Do we turn those on all by default? It seems re like- it's, Yeah, it should be. Yeah. If you're building a RISC-V chip, you're probably going to use the RISC-V specs for those things, so. Yeah. Also, you most of the time will have the memory to keep this one uh, driver around. And when you have really a special case board with a tiny amount of memory, then you will need to trim, trim the- That's it, you're not gonna run def config anyway, yeah. right? So yeah, exactly. it's not it's not all things to all people, it's just some kind of reasonable thing. Yeah. So, right, yeah. For me, the, for me anyway, the, the value in def config is I can just slam in my CI, just run def config, and then I know something breaks or not. Like I, I don't. I don't, I don't really want to yeah, run that. I guess if you know if the common stuff breaks, but <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I still have an old mod config that's broken in every release, but <laughs> whatever. I 
I've only had, I only had three slides, so I'm, I think we're done. <laughs> yeah, okay. I'll, I'll brought the schedule back in line, maybe. I don't know if anyone else has questions. The break is after this, so we can talk about stuff or go have coffee.